Hello and welcome back. It's another Magic the Gathering draft video. I'm Al here with How to Draft MTG. We're checking out a Crimson Vow premiere draft. As always, if you like what we're doing here, please do click like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions about the draft, how to draft, my approach, if you want to criticize my play, uh, if you want to show a little love, the comment section is where to do that. First thing we're going to be doing is checking out our rare. Not a rare I'm excited about, unfortunately. Grolnock, the Omnivore, 2 green blue for 3-3. Three, three. When it attacks, you mill 3. And uh, anything, anytime a permanent goes to your graveyard from your library, you exile it with a croak counter, and then you may play those cards uh, as long as Grolnock is in play. It's not a very impactful body. The fact that this has to attack to uh, get any value is pretty rough, too, because like a 3 3 is not a very good attacker on turn 5 or whatever is the earliest it's going to be attacking. So, not a fan of the card. Not a fan of blue green as an archetype. So, if we don't open a good rare, we're really looking to push heavily into red, white, or black, as those are the strongest and most consistent colors in the format. So, that's going to leave us with Gluttonous Guest, Heron of Hope. And I guess Fearful Villager. None of which we're all too excited about. I guess Distracting Geist is in the conversation as well. Uh, also not a card we're terribly excited about. I think the best of the bunch is Heron of Hope. Although it is a little expensive. That's hilarious. The bots, <laughs> the bots know that green blue is that bad. That they think we should take Heron of Hope over the rare. That I've never seen that. Wow. So we are going to take the Heron of Hope. We're not going to get married to white or anything. We're just going to take it and see what happens. Winged Portent. As you can see, people are not loving blue or blue-green because it's just not very good. So we're not going to take that either. Uh, the uncommons in this pack are a little bit better. Infestation Expert is excellent. Uh, and as much as I don't like green, I do like this card. And I can see taking here. Starting with a 4-drop and a 5-drop is a little bit rough. But I could see it. Uh, Parish Blade Trainee is pretty bad. Blue is not where we want to start. Ragged Recluse is not very good, but you need two drops and it does the job. Belligerent Guest is fine as a three drop in red, and the rest of these cards are garbage. So, yeah, I mean, two really weak packs in a row. I could see going Blood Hypnotist to try to sort of dig into red a bit, but I think Infestation Expert is a solid amount better than the Hypnotist. Uh, Green White is not a great archetype, but... I mean, if we do get some bomb rares or whatever, we could sort of make it happen. So, not married to our picks by any means. Alchemist Gambit, another unplayable rare. Uh, so, we'll, we'll let somebody else have that one. Brian Comer is an excellent, excellent card. And I think we're going to take it here. Uh, this is close, though, because Flame Blessed Bolt is maybe the best common in the whole set. And it puts us into red, which is probably the best color in the set. So I could see an argument for either of these. I think the power level of Brian Comer is, uh, and I can never unhear Lords of Limited saying Brian Comer. I can never unhear that. Uh, it, it, I think the power level of this is just high enough and unique enough that we should take it here. Uh, red is going to be fairly contested. Black's usually fairly contested. So if we have a good reason to be white-blue, we'll probably benefit from the fact that most other people at the table... Uh, don't really care about the blue cards and, and maybe not about the white cards. But again, we're only three picks in here. We're not married to anything. We could be white anything. We could be green, red, because that's the only good green deck. Or we could be blue, white. Um, so we'll see what, what comes here. Archgool Thraben, three mana, three, two, and it dies. Look at the top. Uh, so the zombie thing's just not really that good in this format. Blood is a much better theme if you're looking for themed decks. So, uh, I'd be down to play this if we already had a bunch of zombies, but I don't want to start there and then feel like we have to pick zombies more highly than other cards. So I think this pick is between Gluttonous Guest. Pick four Gluttonous Guest is a reasonable signal, I think. Uh, or Belligerent Guest as a red card. Uh, and I think you could make arguments for either. I think Gluttonous Guest is slightly more powerful. But I do like the fact that Belligerent Guest, although its win rate is a little bit lower than I would have expected, I like that it, it pushes you to attack because I feel uh, attacking is very important in this format. Okay, so there have been some, some weird packs here. Um, starting to see a little bit of green. I like Weaver of Blossoms a reasonable amount. We have Infestation Expert already, so we could lean into that a little bit. Uh, no white, no playable blue. Stitch Assistant is, is not really a card we're interested in here. And then there's another Gluttonous Guest. And, I mean, I think anytime we're lacking direction, if we can sort of dig into the Blood deck, which is red-black. I know we're not really seeing red, but, um... 
dig into those blood colors, I think that's a good place to sort of default to, and you'll train wreck uh, far fewer drafts that way, whereas digging into green can really just, we can just end up not, you know, if we're not seeing the red cards, uh, it's really hard to have a good green deck. Like, black green is not good, blue green is not good, white green is not very good. So, um, green is just so narrow in this set that I don't really want to be uh, going down that road if not for, um, you know, excellent, excellent rares. Infestation Expert is not that good, although it is really good. So, um, hopefully that explains everything. We need two drops pretty badly. Kessick Fr Flame Breather does that job pretty well. But I think we'll we'll continue to dig into black here. Uh, not seeing really anything in blue or white that makes us think we should be playing this Brine Comer. Um, so I think we'll grab the Diagraph Scavenger. I could see an argument, though, for the Flame Breather or the Wedding Invitation, which does fit into, you know, pretty much any deck. Um, okay, Cartographer Survey, pretty bad. Green Uncommon, so we won't be taking that. Massive Might's a nice one. Um, we're three black cards in, so I think that's really limiting our, how, you know, how much exposure we want to green um, because of how poor black green is as a color pair. So I don't think I'm going to take the Massive Might, although I do think it's very good if you are in green. I think we'll take Belligerent Guest here. Again, like, we, we don't have a strong direction. The packs aren't really showing us much. There's not much to read here in terms of signals. So I think we just want to dig into the deepest and most consistent colors. Um, I was having co uh, a conversation with a, in, in a coaching session. I was coaching uh, um, uh, somebody, and they, they said, you know, is it harder to read signals in Arena because it's a little bit more unpredictable than MTGO where, like, the player base is generally more, they're more, you know, ingrained and, and expert players and stuff like that. And, and I think there is something to that. So I think if you're not really seeing strong signals, you want to be digging into the colors that are the most deep and consistent so that you don't get burned by, you know, oh, I saw Witness the Future ninth or whatever, eighth, like blue's really open and it doesn't end up being open and like blue's just not a very deep color. So you end up, um, you end up in a bad spot. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Ridge Wolf is what we took over Diagraph Scavenger. That's close. I could see it going either way. We really need twos. As you can see, we have we had none until then. Uh, Ridge Wolf's not a great two, but I think it does the, it does the job. Uh, we'll take a Villager here. Again, just trying to get deeper into red and black. They're just two of the best colors in the set. And like our, you know, our, our, uh, our pack one is not going very well. We're just not seeing good cards, but um, we have playable black and red cards it's likely we'll see more playable black and red cards going forward. Um, maybe we'll get lucky, open a red or black rare, and and sort of get there. Um, okay, aim for the head. I think is fairly actually fairly playable in this set. It's not something that we're like really excited about, but um, you know, in a pinch, I think we could rock it. Exiling is huge in this format, and people are playing bombs, so you can catch them with their last couple cards in hand. You can get a real, uh, real nice one. Uh, here's a Voldaren Epicure. I don't know what pick we saw this in. I guess it would have been pick three, so that's where we took the Brine Comer. But uh, this is an excellent red card, and uh, I don't want to say it's a signal because I don't know how many people are on this as being really good. But um, ported windows completely unplayable. Please don't pick it. Um, and uh but you know we're gonna we're gonna snap it up again red just very deep very there's a lot going on there whereas like you know the last couple of green cards we're seeing are just like you know not good uh so there you have it uh graph reaver probably not what we want it's a very aggressive card you know two mana three three not bad um destroying planeswalkers does not come up in limited two drops are something we're in the market for but ones that kill you are not really what what we want to be doing um, I think this is a pretty easy Ballista Watcher for my money. This card's been a lot better than it looked. Uh, it does die to a Braid, which is annoying, but a Braid's been harder and harder to get in draft, so you don't see it as much in the games. Um, and I mean, yeah, this can this can take over. If, the, if this flips, it's a huge problem, so I, I like it. Um, Diagraph Scavenger is the other card we might be looking at here. And again, just really not much. Angelic Quart Quartermaster is excellent, but we saw zero white after that Brine Comer. So, uh, actually, and that sort of brings me back to, um, the, the general strategy in draft, which is that what you see in pack one is what you can expect to see in pack three, because the packs move, uh, to the left in pack one and pack three, and they move to the right in pack 
too. So the fact that we saw zero white would make me very, very hesitant to move in on the uh, the angel there and start picking up white cards because we're just we're not going to see anything in pack three, and uh, we could we could end up in a really tough spot where we like decide to drop these black cards, uh, and we might end up short on playables. So we're we're not going to uh, not going to fall into that trap this time. Okay, we're going to take a two drop here because we really need one. Again, red showing showing its depth. You know, I do love Heron of Hope. Uh, Griffin Cavalry is good too. Blood Hypnotist is good as well. We have a lot of threes though, so we don't need it as badly. Grizzly Ritual is actually a kind of a card that we're not looking to play just because uh, in the Black Red Blood deck, you don't hit your sixth and seventh land drops all that often because you're cycling a lot with blood, which is good. Uh, but that means you don't want to play six drops that don't like win the game when you cast them. That that being said, like you you you'll play. Uh, Grizzly Ritual if you need removal and more often than not we're going to need removal uh, nowadays because people know how good it is in this format but uh, yeah not not something that we're we're looking to to rock over like a solid two drop uh, like Celebrant in a situation like this where we have um, you know only two uh, early plays at that point in time we're going to take uh, Flame Blessed Bolt at this point in the pack that's an easy decision best uh, common in the set and it's in our color uh, and we could, we could drop black at this point. Just keeping that uh, in mind. And here's uh, here's Dormant Grove, which is a good reason to potentially drop black. This card is really, really busted. And we saw, I would say, a reasonable amount of green in pack one. We saw Hookhand Mariner, you know, fifth or sixth, I think. Um, we saw that massive might, maybe it was Mariner fifth, massive might six. Like green was kind of happening in pack one. There's no good red card here and there's no good black card here. I don't, I don't find, excuse me, the gargantua to be all that playable. Uh, so I'm going to speculate on the dormant grove. Also career bet quite bad, uh, unless you're like really doing it with the life gain thing. Uh, so going to spec on this dormant grove and see what happens. Um, and now, so we're in a situation here where we're, we know we're red. Uh, we've got a reasonably good red pool. I actually don't really like Weary Prisoner that much, but we've got a, a reasonable red pool here. We've got some good black, but we've got some good green now as well. So we're going to try to, our tiebreaker is always going to be, is there a good red card in the pack? The deeper we go into black, the less we can play green and vice versa. So we're just going to take Lacerate Flesh here, get deeper into red. We need removal. This card is not very good, but um, we need removal. So we're going to take it. Could have taken the wolf there, but then it's like we're, we're, we're hamstringing ourselves because uh, if we see something dope in black later or if we open a black rare next pack, we're going to want to play black. Uh, and if we take the ragged recluse that in that situation and the opposite happens, we see some see another dormant grove or we see another, um, you know, we see a green rare next pack. We're losing picks. Uh, we're throwing away cards that we've drafted. We don't want to do that. So similarly here, uh, Gift of Fangs is very tempting, actually, because we need removal. Well, I'm going to take Evolving Wilds. Uh, I could see an argument for Mind Leech Ghoul as well because we don't have very many twos. But um, Evolving Wilds is always going to make your deck. And again, we just want to make sure we have cards that we can play. We don't want to be taking cards that we're potentially going to drop if we pivot in one direction or another. Uh, Dawnheart Disciple is pretty bad. Gluttonous Guest is pretty darn good. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna snap that up. We have a lot of threes, but um, it's worth it. And we probably don't play aim for the head at the end of the day. So um, it's all good. Okay, so we're really really are riding the line here, aren't we? I think uh, it's between Flame Breather and Massive Might, and I think we take Flame Breather here. Neither card is excellent in our deck. Massive Might is not excellent because we don't have a lot of two drops and Flame Breather is not excellent because we don't have a lot of non-creatures. So it's it's a bit of like, it's a bit of a catch-22 there, but um, we'll snap up the Flame Breather and uh, maybe we'll find some ways to, uh, to maximize it later. No red cards here, so we do have to decide, but it's an easy decision because Mulch, Sheltered Bows, Sheltering Bows and Lady Rest are all really bad. So we'll take the Mind Leech Ghoul here. And this is the problem with green is that it's just not... You, there's just cards like this floating around that you just can't put in your deck. So um, it's why it makes it hard to draft green. Um, Yeah, easy Pyre Spawn. Hope to not play it, but that's all there is. And Snarling Wolf comes all the way around. I don't I, I don't think we ever played double aim for the head. The fact that Snarling Wolf came all the way around the table, uh, pick 11, 
again, like I'm feeling like green is kind of happening. Snarling Wolf is good with the Ridge Wolf that we have as well. So, um, and it's Snarling Wolf just decent. Anything that costs one mana or two mana, like you want, you want to be playing these cards. So I still think we're right on the line between red, black, red, green, which is you know not a bad place to be. Um, we've got a couple of these pyre spawns. If we're really hurting for playables, we can rock them. Hopefully we won't have to. And hopefully, I mean, we've got got a three out of five shot, right, at opening a rare we can we can, we can play here. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So this card is is absolutely unbeatable if you can get it down. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna snap that up. That makes our decision. I mean, we got to drop five good cards and one kind of medium card, so that's gonna put us in a spot where, um, yeah, we're we're sort of fighting a little bit. But I think that green was happening. Hopefully, we'll get this taxidermist back, although I don't expect to. Uh, a braid also in the pack, but we got we got to take the busted rare. I think. Um, hopefully, we'll find the weaver blossoms. We'll see one or two of those that that'll help us cast this, and we could even maybe like, I don't know, splash a scavenger. That sounds pretty awful, but um, yeah, there's a lot of cards we want in this pack. But we're gonna take the caretaker. It's very very good, very 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 good. Okay, change of fortune is quite bad. A braid is exactly what we need. Removal and it costs two mana. Blood Pal Celebrant, maybe that comes back around for us. Um, so be, it'd be pretty tough to convince me to not play red-green at this point. Uh, especially the, these cards are not really doing it. Uh, Bioloom Egg, I mean, yeah, we don't want to exploit or anything. Yeah, so, yeah, a braid, easy. A braid number two, that's pretty nice. Flourishing Hunter, also really nice. Uh, real nice, yeah. We would even rock, like, a copy of Mulch uh, now that we have a 6-drop that we actively want to cast. I know I was talking smack about Mulch um, in the previous pack, but we would actually play this. Uh, although it can mill your Caretaker, which is kind of a non-bow. Anyways, we're going to take a Braid here. Flourishing Hunter, though, is nice, but, I mean, we have a 6 that we, we really like, so we'll just stay uh, stay the course here. So I think we're going to cut these black cards. I think it's pretty pretty unlikely we're splashing for any of those. Okay, there's a Mulch. Um, Falkenrath Celebrants is also excellent. Blood Pell Celebrant is good. Snarling Wolf is good. Um, mulch is good. Tough. I th uh, man, that's tough. We're so low on playables because of how much pivoting we've been doing that um, we kind of want all of these cards. I think we, I think we take the Celebrant here. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's what I was thinking though. Okay, we'll take the Falkenrath Celebrants. We do need a little bit of beef, and that's a really good one, but I, I may regret that in the future. Uh, Ballista Watcher number two is not bad. I don't think we want two last rate flesh over a quality four drop. Um, Sharpshooter is like a card we could play. It's not very good, but it's, it's totally fine. Okay, so we're doing okay for fours, so the Mariner... As as good as it is, is not uh, not where we're at we're at right now. I don't think. I think we just want another Ridge Wolf. I do like Reckless Impulse as well. I do like it, uh, but I think we'll take the Wolf. We got some Werewolf action here. This should be a three-two good amount of the time. And uh, we're only at thirteen creatures. I should have looked at that first, but I kind of had a feeling we were low, and so you know. Draw, card draw is good and everything, but if you're not on board and, and doing things, uh, then it's really not that helpful. Um, so again, man, a pile of cards we want. We pretty much want all four of these. We're going to take the bolt because it's the best of them, but uh, if we could wheel any one of these three cards, that would be just, just lovely. Okay, we'll take a weaver here, I think, to help us cast this. Like the snarling wolf, but I think we're going to wheel another snarling wolf from earlier in the pack. Green feels like it's very open. And Wedding Invitation, we could take it. Uh, four Vampires. But this works on anything, right? Yeah, so that's pretty good. Nature's Embrace helps us cast the Caretaker, but it's very clunky and slow. I think we take the Invitation to give us something to do on two. Uh, okay, which is Web versus Mulch? Ah, boy. Neither card very good. Um... I think the web is what we want because it affects the board. Honored Heirloom could make it, but probably not. 
Mariner comes back around. Mulch comes back around. I just don't want to mill this with mulch. So I think we take the Mariner here. Again, we kind of do still need creatures, right? Yeah, only 15. Another look at mulch, but I think we want the Snarling Wolf. So, sorry, mulch. So we're just going to get Landsgrid a bunch, and I'm going to be like, oh, I should have taken mulch. I think mulch is good, but it's, uh, I don't know. It just, it's not better than any of these other cards we keep seeing it with. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that was a that was a pretty cool draft. We uh, abandoned our first pick, which was Heron of Hope. Um, didn't see any sweet rares, obviously, early on. Uh, we saw Brian Comer. We thought maybe we'll be blue-white. Just saw zero blue-white. Didn't hold on to it. Uh, drilled down into red and, and black as the deepest colors. Didn't really see much black. Saw some red. Uh and uh, stayed open by getting deep into red and then uh, got rewarded by opening a Caretaker and being able to play it. If we'd taken too many black cards in pack two, we would have been in a spot where taking this Caretaker would have cost us too many picks. And um, we we're also sort of keeping in mind from pack one that we had been seeing green. So we only need to cut one card here. I don't think we're going to bring in Crushing Canopy or any of these red cards, so it'll just be an easy, um, hopefully easy cut here. We're rocking 16 creatures, so it's probably a non-creature that we want to cut. And it's probably going to be Wedding Invitation, because we've got a pretty good amount of um, early stuff to do. Flame Breather is fine, I think, in this deck. We've got two Abraid, two Bolt, a Combat Trick, and a Last Raid Flesh, and, you know, it can block... Get us to our late game stuff. Yeah. So I think we just cut the invitation, right? Got some fixing. It's a little, you know, evolving wilds with one drops is annoying sometimes, but more often than not, it's, it ends up being okay. And what else do we have to worry about? And, uh, I mean, I think we're in great reasons, right? Dormant Grove, one of the best green uncommons. Uh, Expert, likewise, and Avabrook Caretaker, one of the best uh, rares in the whole set. So, yeah. Dig it. Could see playing the invitation over the web. Could see maybe not doing the wilds. So we'll see how we'll see how awkward it feels. Um, and we do have access to some blood to filter, but not a ton. Okay, yeah, dig it. All right, we'll see you for round one. Okay, opponent goes first. We've got a good um, curve here, so we're gonna keep. See what they've got going on. Mythic number 386. Alright, Selhoff and Tumor. Not a card I've played with myself. Interesting to see. Obviously this person is a competent magic player. As they're very high ranked, so we'll see what they do with it. Uh, Spore Crawler in the house. A Braid pretty bad there against that card. I think we'll just Fearful Villager it up. And go from there. Ballista Watcher probably next turn. And, uh, yeah, and then we've got, uh, Witch's Web to maybe mess up combat, slash a braid to maybe mess up combat, get opponent discards, Cobbled Lancer, that's a good one. That's a good one to discard. Opponent plays a forest and a soul cipher board. Okay, we are doing the green, green, blue thing over here. All right, three home encounters. We need to get rid of all of those so it can flip, and then we can kill it with a braid. We can kill it with a braid right now uh, if we wanted to. So Fearful Villager can trade for Spore Crawler. That's pretty bad. I think we just play the Watcher. Hopefully they don't have Syncopate. That would be awkward. We could abraid the Crawler. We could attack with the Villager. If they block with both, we could web... Kill both their things. If they had the counter spell, we could abrade and kill both their things. I kind of like that as a starting point. Well, if they got sync pay for one, we just pay for it actually. So, yeah, we don't need to worry about that. So yeah, let's get in for two. Kind of nice. They have to double block here. I guess they could have the bounce. The bounce spell would kind of mess us up. I don't know if uh, that's something we're super worried about. 
could they could be playing anything though. I mean, they're playing uh, green blue here. So any anything goes. Soul Cipher board. Feels like we want to abrade that. <clears throat> it's a tight little two for one we're getting. Discard another cobbled lancer. Okay. Is this from anywhere? Graveyard from anywhere, remove an omen, then if it has no omens, transform it. Okay, so I guess we do want to kill this right now. Uh, well, I guess we can do it in response to the triggers, yeah. Kill, kill, kill. Alright, well, don't hate our spot. They have a lot of cards in hand, though. Oh, and they're splashing. Okay. I'm a little scared. Weaver of Blossoms, Twin Blade, Geist, both in the house. Uh, so the Villager attacking here. Trades for the Geist. That's not, not great. So probably just play Ballista Watcher and... Um, Try to kill the guys that way, I guess. And uh, pass the turn back. I think we've managed our resources reasonably well. We got the two for one with the web, the one for one with the braid on the imp uh, a card that would have been a three two flyer that lets them um, catalog or whatever that ability is. Draw two, discard one um, for free. So I, I think that's fine. Maybe we didn't need to use the braid, but like if they get to activate that once, then all of a sudden they're like really doing it. Um, we could attack next turn with the watcher. What did they pitch to this? A land, okay. Mulch, okay. Bunch of stuff in the yard. Gutter skulker in the yard. We could attack with the watcher here. Get the double block. Okay, well now they could double block Lantern Bear Geist on it. That'd be annoying. Oh, okay, or, or we'll just win the game um, with this thing. Cool. Okay, so what are we putting the counters on? I suppose the Fearful Villager coming in as a 4-5 Menace because they can't... They'd have to triple block. We get to take down the Weaver and the Lantern Bearer, leaving the Twin... Blade Geist in play. Okay, so that's what we'll do. We could also just attack with uh, the Watcher as well. Okay, they're just going to scoop. Yeah. That's probably what's going to happen a bunch of the time that we play uh, the Caretaker. So that's why you draft that card. <laughs> see you for the next. We go first. Love to see it. Good curve. We'll keep. Fetch a forest. Wolf on two. I know, I know we can hold the wilds until the end of their turn, but I always feel like I'm just going to, like, misclick and not do it and then really just screw myself over. So um, that's why I'm not doing that. So wolf on two. I guess we weave on three. And uh, swing, because that will give this uh, plus one plus oh, yeah. And then we can uh, infestation expert on five if we draw another land. It's a pretty good curve out. Could also double spell next turn, but I think getting this going as early as possible is is in our best interest. Is this on on attack? Yeah, just can't. down to keep drawing that thing. That's that's pretty nice. Okay, Weaver, and we'll swing for three. They might have uh, fierce retribution here. Willing to play into it. Could be uh, Valorous Stance. Could be, pier I guess, Piercing Light. But they wouldn't be freezing here for Piercing Light. Well, let's, see what it, let's see what it is, if anything. 
Opponent going to take the damage. And they're going to take their turn. Third land drop. Militia Rallier. Can't attack alone, but it can block. Uh, happy to trade Wolf for it, I think. And then just play Ballista Watcher, I guess. Obviously want to play the Expert, but... Um, we don't have the land, so, I mean, to play Wolf, Wolf is uh, pretty inefficient mana-wise. So I think, yeah, I think it's pretty pretty easy choice here. Doubt they're blocking here. We could have a combat trick. They get really rocked by that. Okay, they are going to block. That's cool as well. Trade our two-drop for their three-drop. Ballista Watcher. So this is a color combination that has access to Wrath effects by invitation only, and the other one, the black-white disroyal creatures for six mana. So we got to keep that in mind, especially when they make moves like that. It makes me feel like they are, um, you know, playing playing for the longer game, want to make us overextend and stuff like that. Okay, we need to hit lands at some point. Um, but I guess for now we'll just. I, I mean. As I'm talking about overextending, but like, like I think we still do play both these cards. Uh, get in with the Weaver also? Yes, there's no reason not to. If they fear the trick, they may not block it. They had no fear last turn though, so yeah, okay, that's fine. And let's uh, Wolf Wolf. <clears throat> So, I mean, if they have the invitation only right now, that would be very good. But they don't have the right mana for it. Need double white. Because we don't have enough mana to cast anything that's in our hand. So we'd probably lose the game if they had it here. Looks like they don't. So we've got good-looking attacks coming up. Uh, so Ballista Watcher trades for the Heron Blessed. These other creatures get in. Uh, they can eat the Weaver. Or we just pass and let them, f uh, let the werewolves flip. That would leave us with what? This just, uh, gives two mana. So we could, we could only ping one time with this. So that doesn't seem right to me. So I think we jam with everything except the Weaver. See what they want to do. Trading their their five for a four is okay with me. And then uh, it, it we do want to get rid of this Heron because it's going to make it really hard for us to uh, race them. And uh, yeah, I mean, if we were hitting land drops, this would be a different story, but we'll actually just pump our thing here and play uh, Epicure. And we could actually filter something might be correct to pitch I think it's correct to pitch Falcon Wrath Celebrates try to hit a land drop this turn because then if we draw a land next turn we get to play Averbrook Caretaker so I think we actually do want to do that Infestation Expert is a better card than uh, Celebrants I think uh, getting two blood is really useful but <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I think we're in a pretty decent spot here. They could pay four mana to make a couple one ones, and then it's night time, which means that everything gets bigger and they uh, they get rocked. So yeah, they 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 do want to cast a spell this turn, and they do. Okay, flame blessed bolt. Flame Blessed Bolt. I think that does it, right? So this dies. They go to seven. No, it doesn't die because Bolt exiles. They go. They stay at six. They block here. We pump the wolf. I mean, they could have uh, Bleed Dry, I guess. I think we go for it. Looks like they don't have an instant. So this should be good enough. And it is. And we'll see you for the next. 
Opponent goes first, and here we are with a decent one. Gonna need to find some more creatures and stuff like that, but I mean, we put 16 or 17 of them in our deck or whatever, so uh, gotta trust the deck a little bit there. But yeah, it'd be a little awkward if we don't uh, don't find any. Doomed Dissenter. Rats. Wish we had double. Uh, wish we had red, red. We could bolt that and cast Epicure. <clears throat> it's probably fine to attack for one here. If they block, we update. We upgrade their thing to a two-two. And we have to spend two mana, which is, yeah, that's pretty annoying. Um, that's pretty annoying. Just thinking next turn we can cast Epicure anyways. And like, I don't think the 1-1 one, one body is going to matter. So, yeah, I think I think we get in. I would res I would very much respect the block here. Okay, they're not going to go for it, so then we will definitely just cast our creature, but I think it would have been okay to to have to spend the two mana there. We could actually filter if we wanted. Weaver of Blossoms. Okay. Could discard Witch's Web, but I don't know that we need to do that just yet. Uh, we wouldn't mind killing that weaver though. That'd be that'd be a pretty nice feeling. They double block on the wolf. We bolt and pomp, and they 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 lose both their creatures. So we'll we'll attack with just the wolf. Let's take take one here, and I think we just play the. Ridge Wolf. Very tempting to abrade the Weaver, though. That's a tough choice. We're definitely letting damage happen. Uh, the thing about Weaver is it's like... It's not that good of a card. I think we just play the Wolf. There is a chance that they've got something busted in their hand and they're going to try to play with that, but... I mean, they're only at five mana this turn, so we, we actually have, like, an extra turn to figure it out. Okay, that's not that busted. And that's not that busted. But it did, it did let them double spell that turn. Okay, so do we want to kill the ghoul? We want a great many things. I think we'll kill the ghoul. Seems like it's kind of annoying. And this way they don't get to look at the top card. Evolving Wilds. Seems like a card we would just want to filter away. So, in with the Ridge Wolf. And then what? If they block with their wolf, we can web. That's, like, not that cool. We kill their... Killed our 2 2 with our 2 zoo or our 2 drop uh, combat trick. We'd like to do a little bit better than that. Snarling Wolf is interesting. If they double block, we pump it. We kill both their things. Slash, we could, we could web it and kill both their things. So that seems good. Yeah. And. Yeah, okay, so let's start there, or do we want to see... I guess we want to see what we draw. <clears throat> Another Starling Wolf. Cool. All right. So I think we just get in with Wolf A. Do we go for the Abrade this turn on the Weaver? So we could have seven mana next turn. Or six mana, rather. That's when things start getting a little hairy. I mean, they've got all their colors, presumably. Um, tough choice. I think I would like to kill that, yeah. We could add our Snarling Wolf to the board. And then we've got, like, a lot of power and toughness next turn, because we can pump both of these. 
in. Uh, yeah, we'll take two. It's all good. Fell Stinger. That's good. That's real good. Still just trades for uh, one of our creatures, but obviously draws in two cards. That's pretty gross. So I think we get in with both wolves, but not the uh, not the ridge wolf. This doesn't give like indestructible or anything. No. Okay. We just get in with both of these guys. <clears throat> Pump. And probably pump the other wolf for just for damage. I think so. Play lands because we do want to get to uh, six mana. Hopefully draw our sweet, sweet caretaker. So obviously this is like a, what, a three for one? Because it killed our wolf and drew them two cards. But also like we just have to kind of deal with that uh yeah we'll take four here mole graph millipede is gonna be big it's gonna be a big old boy okay cool all right so web can 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 get the millipede with uh in in concert with the snarling wolf so plus we can untap and try to get him that way so i think we get in pump and maybe we do try to do the untap thing because this would be a three three plus yeah that'd be a six six and we would have the mana to do it as well yeah so i think they don't have any instants because their game is not pausing at all so unless they draw one right here we shouldn't get blown out they're gonna jam with all for sure yeah all right well, we're gonna try this because we're otherwise we're gonna well hold on they're at eight. This is an attack for nine. We got five. I mean, they got three cards in hand, so they're probably going to have another creature to play, but if they didn't, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we would actually have lethal. I think it's still right to go. I mean, I feel like they're going to play more blockers, right? So, like, we, we, even though we're kind of ahead here, I think, uh, I think we do do this. Pumpy, pumpy. Okay, that was good. We didn't get blown out. I guess if they're just staring at three lands in their hand, we would have just we would have just killed them on the on the retaliation there. But no, okay, they've got. Okay, it's back and back and better than ever. Jeez, well that didn't go well. <laughs> okay, it's nighttime, so this is a six four. I guess we just chump this with the epic here. Uh, yes. But we're kind of in trouble now. That millipede is massive. I guess they don't really have attacks on us, though. They are going to come in with it. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're certainly chump blocking. This can't be blocked. I mean, I guess if they, got, if they can double spell this turn, then this flips to a 4-4. Four, four. But this can't be blocked by uh, the other two creatures they have. Okay, they just have another one of those. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, I think we might be getting millipeded here, guys. 11, 11. Uh, caretaker? Weaver. Okay. Shoot. So I guess the move was maybe, yeah. To, I mean, they may have had the second copy in their hand. It's hard to say, but maybe the move was to try to kill them last turn with, uh, or two two or three turns ago, and we could have just retaliated with uh, with the combat trick. Okay, they're coming with both. Uh, I guess we're going to... We could double block the millipede, the 8-8 one, right? Or we could do the 11-11. Lose three creatures. Doesn't seem great. None of this seems good. To me, uh, three, three, twelve, two, four, eight, ten. We've got last flesh, we got a braid. Uh, 
Third eight. Third eight. And we currently have six. And we've got like trample and stuff. I think we just chump. I think our best chance is to like just get them with a retaliation. Okay, they just have one of those. Okay, last right flush. Does that do anything? So that kills the geist. They can't block this. They go to two. Uh, we attack with both of these and they go to uh, they go to one. That's yeah, not quite enough. Well, I mean, we are doing it. Why don't you have trample? And we're at two, so we can't... Uh, we can't attack with the raider and live, right? So, I think they've got us here, unless they want to uh, go ahead and misclick. That'd be cool. One short. One short. There had to have been a, an opportunity to get another damage in this game, so... If you saw it, let me know in the comments. We Maybe we could have got him, but we didn't. See you back for the next game. And we're back, two and one. We're on the play here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't cast our spells, so I think we're sending this one back, which is web, obviously not effective enough that we want to, uh, yeah, sacrifice all of these red cards, potentially. I mean, obviously, if we draw a mountain, we're fine, but uh, it's fairly unlikely with uh, only eight in the deck and... Uh, what have you. So, we're in Mulligan. And this hand is fine. Uh, <laughs> kind of potentially just want to put back the Caretaker. Um, so we do want to go Ridge Wolf into Fearful Villager. I don't think we can. I, I don't think we can afford to put this back because of how good it is. But, I mean, if this was like a 6 mana 6, 6, gain some life, whatever that thing's called, uh, we would put it back. I think we'll put a mountain back. We need to find some amount of lands, and we need to find green lands in order to cast this anyways, so uh, if we just don't draw lands, we're not going to win this game either way, so I think it's fine to put a land back here, but um, a little bit awkward, and uh, if if folks out there were thinking put put the caretaker back, I could I totally respect that um, as, a, as a play here. Uh, so draw two drop, that's not too bad. We'll rock it. It's more likely to be able to attack next turn because it has first strike. And uh, it doesn't matter because our opponent didn't play a spell. But we did not draw land. So uh, in for two we go here. Play Ridge Wolf. Pass it back. Fortunately our opponent hasn't done anything yet. So at least we can get off to uh, off on the right foot here and be, uh, be beating them down. Uh, this is getting awkward. So definitely attacking with Blood Petal Celebrant because we can kill that thing with Flame Blessed Bolt. There's no way they're blocking here. Oh, thank you so much. This is so good. Um, wow. If they, yeah, I mean, it should exile, right? Yeah, yeah, nice. That's so good. Um, yeah, if, if they uh, if they didn't block there, we'd be in a lot more trouble. Still in trouble because we can't find lands. So, I mean, how different would this be? If we'd put the caretaker back, we'd have fearful villager in play, which means not a ton, really. We'd be able to attack with, um, maybe with Ridge Wolf, I guess. Um, maybe this would be flipped. I guess we'd be attacking with it. So we'd be in a better spot, but not by a ton. Uh, they're going to get in with this thing? I don't think they should. I think we double block if they attack us. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Fearful Villager coming down. Man, if we could just find a forest, we're, we're going to be in good shape. No attacks. And, uh, yeah, again, we're definitely double blocking. We want the Blood Petal Celebrate to die. Um, oh, jeez. Okay, this game might be over. What does this do? Defender Flying Vigilance. At the beginning of your upkeep, if this has two or fewer judgment counters on it, put a judgment counter on it. When it has three or more, it can attack. And then um, it doesn't have lifelink. Okay, we found an Abrade. Which means transforms into this. Disturb for seven mana. They have four mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a counter. If there are three or more, Chant player loses the game. Okay. <clears throat> well. 
So we're a few turns away from casting that. Just wondering if we want to swing with the celebrant and try to abrade something. It's good use of our mana. Or do we just want to sit back and wait? Seems like our opponent wants to sit back and wait. Maybe we just take this opportunity to sit back and wait till we hit some land drops. Maybe we can build up our board with Dormant Grove and get get ourselves into a position where we can just kill them in one swing. So I think using a braid here, if they block with Gluttonous Guest, we almost kind of want that more. Um, I guess this eventually just becomes a huge problem as an attacker, though, too, right? So we can't just wait around forever. Huh, so maybe we do want to kill it. We've got three turns at least before they can have enough mana to replay it, and then we have three more turns before it kills us. Hmm, tough decision. Um, one, two, three. So we still got three turns before this is even attacking. I think we wait. I think we wait. I think we've got time. Our opponent wants to play a long game. We're kind of okay playing a long game because we have some really, really good cards if we can ever hit some lands that we can get down. Um, this equation changes a whole lot if we had uh, Flame Bless Bolt instead of a Braid because exiling this is pretty pretty darn nice. But I think, we, I think we have a second copy of Bolt, actually, so maybe that could happen. Yep, that's all, that's all really gross. Coming in with the guest? Still no. Okay, well, we could have braid the quartermaster. That's probably correct to do. Because that thing's going to beat us down. They can they can just get it back later. But, I mean, we just need to, like, sort of lengthen the game a little bit so that we can uh, cast our spells. Jeez. I thought we put forests in our deck. All right. Well, Ballista Watcher's a 5-5. Five, five. That's kind of nice. I guess that's all we're doing. We can actually use this to make Judge unable to block. So if they don't have another creature, then uh, Werewolf gets in. Hopefully we just find a friggin' forest, though. <laughs> That'd be nice. Get a Dormant Grove going. Okay, so next turn this is attacking us. And it's got Vigilance. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, just going to be like that, eh? Okay. Well, I mean, we had a lot of draw steps to find green, and we just didn't, right? So, And we had to mulligan. Mulligan to hand with, with no uh, red into a hand with no green. Just kind of the best of one uh, hand smoother kind of thing, you know, where you just... I think there's something to that where it counts the number of lands you have rather than like your color requirements when it's choosing between different hands. So you do end up with monocolored uh, hands a bunch of the time where it just doesn't really work out. That's magic for you, you know. I, I, I have a hard time imagining us winning this game at this point because if we now if we don't kill that thing, we're just dead in three turns. And even if we find a way to, uh, they they can recast and we're dead in three turns. But uh, so, you know, maybe there's an argument for attacking there, but then they just play the um, uh, the quartermaster and, and uh, then we don't have a way to kill that. So I, I, I stand by the sit, sit around and wait plan. Just unfortunately, our deck doesn't want to give us uh, <laughs> give us what we need here, but we'll play it out. We'll be dead pretty quickly or we'll, uh, if we do turn this game around, it'll be uh, it'll be pretty darn fast, I think. Either way. So we take eight, so we're yeah dead next turn. Uh, so I guess next turn we have to find forest and use it to cast web because this gives reach. Um, seven. So I guess if we do draw green, we could attack with fearsome werewolf. If they double block, uh, we get to kill the judge, and that makes us not dead next turn. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. This still dies, though, which is kind of annoying. Oh, jeez. They have another one of those now. Okay, we found the green. Ah, uh, so what can they do now? They can double block Werewolf with Bat Guest. 
which means we're still dead to the judge. Um, if we sit back, we could web on the judge, take five down to two, and then die the next turn. Does this have reach? No. Uh, so yeah, I think we're we're out of this one, unfortunately. Um, but you know, sometimes you get sometimes you get mana screwed. That's all right. All right, we're back. We're going first, and we've got a good looking hand here. One drop, two drop, excellent five drop for a little bit later. So I'm happy with this. Let's see what we can do. <clears throat> All right. Is this gonna be? Is this gonna be the game where we draw all lands? I shouldn't get too negative here. It's, it's all. It's all good. It's all variants. All right. Opponent. Blue black. Selhoff and Tumor. Not too worried about that. Nice draw for us here. So we get to attack with both creatures and just pump the wolf. I guess. So we have nothing else to do. Unlikely they're gonna block. We'll get in for a cool six points there. And I guess we can just do the same thing next turn if we don't draw uh, a, a spell to play. We're in a reasonably good spot here. Ragged Recluse. Trades with the Ridge Wolf. That's kind of annoying. And opponent going to activate Selhoff and Tumor. And, okay, yeah, right. Because, of course, because they get to do that. Okay, so now we actively want to trade with that. So, are we going to attack with both of our creatures? I think we do want to do that. Lantern Bearer. We could hang back to block. It opens us up to potential removal spells, all that other kind of stuff. I think dealing them six is pretty darn valuable here. So, I think we're going to just go for that. <clears throat> And I mean, yeah, like we're we're cool with the trade as well because this thing does race us pretty well. And then you know we're dropping a a celebrant next turn. If we had something else to do with our mana, we wouldn't have attacked there. I respect the block because in their eyes they're potentially thinking like we're spending two mana and we don't get to do anything this turn. But the reality of it is, is that we just weren't able to do anything anyways. I guess it shrinks our ridge wolf, which is also pretty good for them. But um, okay, uh, expert is probably the play here. Yeah. Let's get that get that train rolling as soon as we can. We don't have attacks, but we might next turn. Let's see, go and then yeah. Hopefully we can uh, land caretaker uncontested. If they leave up, uh, well, that's just my phone falling on the ground. If they leave up syncopate mana, we'll have to be careful. But otherwise, there you go. Bleed dry. Yep, yeah, fair enough. Okay, so they got one blue up, so there's no risk of, of getting countered here. So this should be should be pretty good for us. Uh, so we think we're pumping the Ridge Wolf, that it's, then it's attacking for five. I think that's better than uh, pumping the, the bug, because we do want to get in there for some damage and close this game out before our opponent can find something gross to do. Because they probably also have like a uh, dread feast demon or something in their deck, yeah. so we want to be able to uh, beat them before they draw that. Okay, cycles a stitched assistant, and they're gonna pack it in. All right, well, caretaker to the rescue. There, see you for the next one. We're back. We're going first. Uh, we got a two drop, three drop combat trick removal spell. His hand is a thing of beauty. A thing of beauty. Here we go. No play for our opponent there, which is nice. Celebrant's going to come down. Better to be mana efficient here, I think, than play Snarling Wolf, although Snarling Wolf lets us hold a bolt, but they may not have a two. So I don't think you want to. Uh, Assume that they have a two, you know. It's likely that they do. Okay, they milled a couple nice removal spells. No creatures in the yard. So we don't need to worry about this thing dying at the moment. So we'll get in for two. Uh, we have first strike, so that's real nice for us. 
And I think, again, just follow that up with the most mana efficient play, which is to cast Villager. Could potentially pass the turn next turn if we wanted to flip this. We have a couple of instants, but uh, probably we'll just play the Wolf. And the Bolt at any point deals with this Butler and it doesn't get to return anything. So we can keep that in mind as well because uh, Bolt does Exile, which is so key in this format. Opponent goes for a Distracting Geist. That's a good target for the Bolt. I think we just... Uh, I guess if we get in with Fearful Villager, they can double block, can't they? Well, not if we put a Dharma Grove token on it. Then they cannot. Uh, or we can put it on the Celebrant. Same deal. Yeah, I definitely don't want to trade anything off here. We could also just attack with both and try to get something favorable with a combat trick. That pushes more damage, actually, than playing Dormant Grove and attacking with only one creature. Uh, our goal is to play Dormant Grove this turn, but if they're going to give us a two-for-one... Like, if they double block, we we bolt... I think we just bolt the Geist, and then they just lose both creatures. And then we play Snarling Wolf. I mean, it's not great for mana efficiency, but I also feel like they're not going to block. And I want to push as much damage as possible early on we could also witch's web and um i don't think okay so the other thing too is like if we use witch's web do they get to return the geist with the butler i believe the answer to that question is no uh but also if we witch's web we don't get to cast snarling wolf this turn which is also kind of bad for us. So we're going to lose a little bit of mana here, but we're getting the two for one. I think at the end of the day, this is worth it. You can tell me if, if you disagree. Uh, I didn't think they were to block here. I think there's just way too many things we could have. But this is kind of messing us up a little bit mana-wise. So these are the things you consider. They're not probably not going to use this ability, right? Unless I missed the... Yeah, they don't have a creature in the yard. Okay, cool. Boom. All right, so we'll play our wolf. So, again, lose, we lost two. Well, I lost out on spending two mana there. We, we did get a nice little clean two for one with the bolt. What do you what do you value more? You know, it's, it's really up to you at the end of the day. Uh, we got nice attacks here. So, again, if we come up with the wolf, they can try to make the trade, make a spend two. Uh, so I think we just play the Grove, pump the wolf, and just get in with everything, and then we don't have to worry about mana efficiency. This is the beginning of combat, right? I've not, I've yet to play with this card. I've lost to it a bunch, though. It seems really, it seems actually pretty bad on first read to me, anyways. It seems like it's really slow, but, um, every time I see it, I'm like, wow, I can't beat that. So, uh, we'll see if our opponent can beat this. It's not looking great for them, but they could have the Wrath... That'd be pretty nasty in this particular spot. If they did do that, um, we would uh, cycle away Witch's Web, I guess, with the Celebrant Blood Token and try to uh, draw something. The opponent's going to Grizzly Ritual our Fearful Villager. Sure. Um, so we're just chilling here. Are we going to play this Mountain? We don't really need to. The only six drop we have in our deck is double green, and if this dies, we want to have fodder to sacrifice it, uh, to, to uh, spend the blood token on, I mean. So I don't think we're playing the land. Uh, I think we're pumping the celebrant because first strike is really good. And then we're going to pump this because damage is really good. Okay, so our opponent's going to four. And yeah, I think we just leave it there. See what they can... They can do here. They got cards. They got mana. They got blood. They, they got plays to make. Feeling a little bit like we could get outvalued by them if they're able to sort of stabilize here. Okay, opponent's going to blood. Cycle of land. So they're looking for action here. If their only play is to have a... Is to play like a big blocker, we're going to be in pretty good shape because Web's going to 
take care of that. Let's see they've got. They play, they play planes. They've got six mana. Because this adds mana, right? So they could wrath us here. If they have that wrath, they're going to gain a life. They're going to pass the turn. No. Yes. Is that wrath instant speed? It might be. Okay, wilds is useful to us because it can get us a green source. So I think we're okay to play that. Um, they're at five. They need to have removal here. So they might have... Um, <clears throat> uh, fierce Retribution. In which case, I think we want to put the counter on the Celebrant so that we're dealing them four damage either way. That makes sense to me. Because they must have removal. And that we're the... Uh, I guess if it's um, Parasitic Grasp, we can get the Wolf out of range, but we can't get the Celebrant out of range, so that'd maybe be a reason to uh, put the door, the, the Grove counter on the, on the Wolf. Um, but I think it's more likely they've got Retribution. It's a common, so we'll go with the Celebrant. We also kind of want, kind of low-key want Celebrant to die so that uh, um, we can cycle. And we're going to go ahead and... Okay. Lantern Flare X equals four. Cleave. They have two of this? That's kind of filthy. Okay. Cool. So that's dead. Ah, no, it's not. We could save it. We have one timeout to think about this. This so is going to be four plus three is... Uh, they're, going to, they're going to nine. If we pump it with web, it becomes a seven, eight, nine. Yes, they're dead. Okay. Right, because this is five toughness, this is four. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay, just barely. Oh, okay, that works too. Cool. Would have missed all those triggers in uh, Paper Magic. All right, on to the next. Opponent goes first. We've got a our choice of twos into our choice of threes, so the hand is solid. Opponent starts with the Minister. Hate to see it. Love to see it on our side, but... Uh, not great. Not great. Okay, no two-drop. That's nice. Okay, no, they do have a two-drop. Okay. All right. Scared. Very scared. Okay, let's play... Oh, geez. None of these... Neither of these are good because they can give Doom to center plus one plus oh. So we're definitely not blocking, so I think we want the Celebrant as it is a better attack. But if we play Ridge Wolf into Fearful Villager, we get in for an extra damage. If we play Celebrant into Guest, um, we we uh, we're a little bit more aggressive. We might get a Blood Token out of the deal. But Villager has three toughness, which means it can block this thing. They'll probably have something bigger by then. But maybe this messes up their attacks a little bit. So I think we want to go actually the Ridge Wolf into Fearful Villager route here. Because uh, we're behind. So even if even though we're not blocking this turn, we, we want to think about blocking the turn after that. So that seems reasonable to me. Because, uh, so yeah, obviously we're trading here. They just get a 2-2. That's not good for us. And Felstinger's going to exploit the dissenters. So they're going to get the 2-2 anyway. So now we're fully not attacking. Um, yeah, so this is not working out very well for us. Uh, a Braid is good. A Braid is a good card. I like to see that. Okay. So, Minister, pumping Zombo token means we're not blocking with the Villager. We could trade Ridgewolf for the Felstinger, that's fine. I think we want to spend three mana this turn, because we have a lot of um, spells in hand here. We're at a high life total, so we're like not in absolute need-to-kill-something mode. So I think we will still go for the Villager. Hope to draw a land and maybe get to go 2-drop, uh, 2-drop next turn would be pretty sick. Um, but yeah, we're not going to attack here because they just they just won't block. They're ahead. They're getting life every turn, uh, and they have uh, they have good attacks on us. So my uh, guitar in the background there. Um. Yeah. So yeah, not not a great spot for us. That was a really good start for them, and the fell stinger, um, doing its thing. Pretty gross. Okay, so interested in trading with three two death touch. Uh, I mean, if they go ahead and recur it somehow that's gonna be real annoying 
don't really want to trade with the zombie token. Because it's eventually going to get outclassed. Uh, whereas this never will. This is always going to trade for one of our cards. So the only reason we would consider trading with the zombie is to preserve our life total here. Um, there is some merit to that. So definitely making this block. Definitely making this block. They could have a trick, you know. That, that's fine. We're just, we're kind of fine with that, I think. And it's, it's it's I think it's most likely to be Valorous Stance or Adamant Will, which gives Indestructible, so we don't want to double block. I guess we'll just lose both our things. And they don't even have to use the trick. We'll just lose both our things. I think we just block like this. We're at 17. We're not doing too badly. If we can rip a couple lands, we'll have an, an Infestation Expert. Um, yeah, okay. Jeez. Okay. Opponent is doing the thing. Okay, so Parish Blade Trainee is going to become a 2-3. Um, we need to find lands. We're not finding them. Weaver provides mana. So that if we play that this turn, we can potentially get Expert down the following turn or like a Braid plus something else. So I think we do want to play Weaver here because we're so so mana constrained. If we had drawn a land, we would be making different decisions. If we're going to abrade something, I guess it would be Traveling Minister. That kind of turns off a bunch of what they're trying to do, but it just it hamstrings us so heavily for the following turns, assuming we hit land drops, that I think we just have to be mana efficient here. Um, this is kind of rough. Kind of rough to get mana screwed as much as we have this draft. But it does happen. And we'll do our best to uh, still, you know, you can't control whether or not you draw lands. You can only control uh, <laughs> how well you play. So we're going to try and do that. And uh, these are the reasons that we're making these decisions. Hopefully they make sense. Okay, so opponent thought for a long while before playing a land and then, um, and then attacking with both creatures. So, um... It's funny that I... Why do I want to trade with the 3-2 now? And I didn't want to last turn. Um, I mean, we didn't know that we weren't going to draw land. So that's that has changed. Our life total is a little bit lower. Don't want to put Weaver in combat. Because if there's a trick here... Um, we're going to be in... We're going to be in tough. The trainee's probably not getting any bigger... Than 2-3... So I think we just put the villager in front of the zombie, or we take. Oh, so if we take five, we go to nine, but then they can train this again next turn, and that's that's bothersome. Um, that's the other thing too is like the board didn't look like this. So I think that this this is a trade we want to make. Don't want to don't want to risk this in combat because uh, if this dies, we just lose the game, as far as I'm concerned. So I'd rather take two damage on the uh, whiff that they might have a combat trick. <clears throat> And we're, yeah, I mean, we're super far behind. Okay, we've got a braid for that. Cannot draw lands, but it's a good card. So, Belligerent Guest is an option for us, or uh, Ridge Wolf plus uh, a braid is maybe the move. Or a Ridge Wolf plus Celebrant. I think we want to play two spells this turn. Ridge Wolf blocks Trainee and trades with it. That's useful. A braid kills Heron. That's useful. Celebrant doesn't block anything, so that's not that useful. Although it does give us a blood if it dies. So I think um, I think we go Ridge Wolf, and I think we abrade the Heron now. Still slightly concerned about combat tricks, and we cannot afford to have that happen. Even though it, w it would be cute to have them activate Minister on Heron and we get to kill it in response. Uh, we're really not getting any much value that way. Uh, so this does add any color. For it. <laughs> Imagine I talked all this time and this only adds green and we can't do any of what I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to kill the Heron now. So we don't get blown out. And, yeah. Still just need to find land. If we do, we're not doing too badly. Let's see what they have for us this turn, though. Okay, opponent pumps Doom Dissenter. Good, good move. So this says to me that they do not have a combat trick. Because this is not a block we're in interested in making. Because this dies into a 2-2, and then we're in the same problem we were before. So, we're going to read that as they do not have a trick. No spell. That's really good for us. Because now we have um, double mana coming from this. Still can't find a land to save our lives. Uh, 
expert. Enters the battlefield, uh, creates two one ones. That's pretty good. So I guess we'll do that. Uh, Blessed Bolt kills uh, Dissenter cleanly and Minister cleanly as well. But I think we just want to get on board here. Man, if we had a land, can you imagine we drew a land here? Six six, just they're just dead. Um, but that's okay. This will be good too, I think. So they may have removal here. Seems seems to be what's happening. We're still going to get two 1-1s one -ones out of the deal, which I think is useful. Um, could have maybe thought a little bit harder about them having removal. I didn't really think of that. Um, but, I mean, getting a couple dudes is fine. We could have gone, uh, like, Belligerent Guest Blood Petal Celebrant. Which, uh, yeah, I mean... Then we flip that flips this back, which is actually kind of bad for us. So I, I think I'm happy with the decision, but I did not really consider them just snapping off removal. I was assuming we we're gonna have a four or five, but it make, makes sense that they would have it because uh, they didn't do anything on their turn. All right, so opponent draws their card. Still looking for things to do. Like our spot here now. We're just a land away from caretaker. Doubtfully they can double spell because they they didn't do anything. Pre uh, previous turn, they played a card on our turn. So it would be a pretty unique situation here that they can double spell. So we just need to find a land, and we're we're doing it. Rot Tide is pretty good, I guess. It gives them a 2-2. Two -two. We sack a 1-1. One -one. We don't really care about. Um, so just, just give us a land one time. One time. Okay, they're going to pump the trainee and swing, and we're... Okay, no, they're not going to. Okay, I was going to say we would block there. Um, all right, well... It's got to be this, right? Are we playing around a Wrath? Even if they Wrath, we still have stuff to do. It's got to be this. Everything has Hexproof. Everything is big. Are we attacking? They trade their Gargantua for our 5-4. Our 5-4 will be a 7-6 next turn, ostensibly. I think we do get in. If they find a way to... I think if they do find a Wrath, then none of this will have mattered. If they don't block, that's fine. If uh, So we will have wanted to get the damage in. Yeah, okay, they're just going to scoop it up. So playing around, like, a ra uh, thinking about a Wrath that they probably don't have, but I think it's worth it to consider this stuff. Uh, on to the next. We go first. Uh, one, two, three, four. The the magic curve here. Uh, loving it. Opponent takes a mulligan. Not too bad for us either. Um, so I'll point out, like, last game we were pretty mana screwed. Our opponent got out to an early lead. And um, we ended up, you know, we have Abra Caretaker in our deck. It's one of the best cards in the set. Obviously, we're pretty lucky to have that. But there are decks that would have killed us before we were able to cast that and i think that's worth pointing out that like i'm not you know i'm not saying like our opponent did anything wrong or like they should have been able to beat us like our, our you know uh, the caretaker's busted if you lose to it don't feel bad like it's it's but but all I, what i'm trying to say is like if you are a deck that's aggressive enough uh you, you know you might have been able to kill us there before we were able to cast it because we did stumble on mana so that is one of the things I prioritize in this format is just being able to win quickly so that uh, you, you get you get those quote-unquote free wins. Um, you know, I, we could have got in with the wolf there. I don't, I don't want to not cast Belligerent Guest this turn. Our opponent probably doesn't block, but again, like, well, I mean, I don't know. If we lose this game by one damage, then maybe I'm an idiot, but I think... Uh, I think there is a cost there. Um, so, anyways, you want to be you want to be a deck that can that can win quickly. That's what I'm trying to say because you'll get some equity there by beating decks that uh, that uh, can't get to their rare. But if you're playing a slow deck, you're going to see everybody's rare every match, you know, and that's that's going to hurt your win percentage at the end of the day. I think. Okay, belligerent guest is going down. Rending flame is good. Okay, cool. So we, uh, we're fine with that. We're going to play Mariner. Again, could have got in for damage. Maybe I'm dumb. Um, but we have really good cards to play here, so I don't want to mess around. Just keep curving out. <clears throat> 
opponent's going to rock on tour, so they're doing the spells thing. Okay, it's getting kind of getting kind of scary. Uh, we have a caretaker again. Nice to see. So if they double block here, we trade for their rock on tour. I think that's fine. And they probably don't want to, but they are getting beaten down, so they might kind of have to. Yeah. So they want to get their damage on us. We're gonna play our infestation expert, and we're doing okay here. We don't have great attacks into this 2-4, but yeah, our opponent's not, not going to play this out. Uh, did, didn't even get to play the rare. All right, well, I'll see you for the finals here. All right, we're back. Finals. Uh, this hand is awkward, but I think we'll keep it. We've got a 1 into a 2. We have a way to find green a little bit later on if we have a hole in our curve, and our 5 is good. So um, I, I think this is, is not a hand you mulligan. But it is obviously on the lower, or at least more awkward side of things. Compared to the hands we've had in the last couple games, it's just been absolutely excellent. This one is a little weird. Okay. So, we could play Blood Petal Celebrant or Ridge Wolf. I think we play the Celebrant. Um, well, do we? If we play the Ridge Wolf, we can play another Ridge Wolf next turn and attack for three. Whereas if we play the Celebrant and they play a like a 2-3 or something. We won't get to attack. Trainee's probably not coming in either way, but it could, and then we'd have to take one. So yeah, I think um, I think the Ridge Wolf is correct here. So next turn, we'll look to play our second Ridge Wolf and fetch a forest, um, unless we draw a 3-drop, in which case we'll we'll have to make some decisions. But I th ideally, we, want, we do want to use this wild next turn. Okay, Trainee gets bigger? No. Daybreak about us? Both come in. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah train that's pretty smart i like it okay uh so this is a 2-2 two -two for the rest of the game whereas this can potentially get bigger so if we are going to make a trade here and i believe we should i think we i think we line up a double block in front of the trainee because it could potentially get bigger we take so we'll take a little bit extra damage here huh uh, next turn we're playing wolf number two, which is going to be worse because it's not a, uh, it's going to be as big as this, but I think that's okay. We could actually just play celebrate next turn and have a trade that gets the blood token. Gut says block the trainee. So we take two extra damage here to, uh, you know, affect their board more meaningfully. Oh, geez. No, wait. No, I forgot it did that. Oh. Okay, well, I'm pretty dumb. Um, so, cool. Anybody who's yelling at the screen there, you were right. So, we're still going to do the same stuff as before. So, if we play the Ridge Wolf here, we get the Ballista Watcher next turn to make it a three. So, we should have blocked the combatants, obviously. I forgot that did that. Um, or we play Celebrant, double block, get a Blood. Kind of seems like we might want to do that either way because we're pretty far behind. But, like, if they have a trick, we get rocked. Hmm. Hmm. We're only 16. 4 3. Okay, I think our plan is to not block because we don't get blown out by a trick. So we're gonna jam for one. Obviously, should have, yeah, should have uh, blocked the training. Damn it. Okay, uh, we'll fetch now, <laughs> so that we don't uh, forget. Get a forest. Precious, precious green mana. So yeah, I was considering blocking for a while there because we are behind, but them doing this just like there's just no way. We're going to put two creatures in front. They could have a braid. They could have any number of combat tricks. We just get totally, totally crushed by that. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so now we get to play with Ballista Watcher, and Ridge Wolf actually can block profitably now. So dig that. And then, you know, like, we get the Celebrants down the following turn. It's not the worst. Uh, so maybe we, maybe we uh, stall them a little bit here. And then Celebrants is a good blocker. And then we can start digging for our... Uh, our payoff cards. Okay. Combatant's gonna pump itself. 
In with everything. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. All right. Block here. Yeesh. I mean, I think we just blocked a rallier. They probably have a trick. But, like, we got Celebrants coming down next turn. We need to protect our life total. We need to make this game go longer. I think we do just do this. Um, you know, unfortunately, they, they do get to trade something. But, you know, if they spend their trick here, then the Celebrants gets a whole lot better next turn. Oh, no, it doesn't because that... Okay, that was horrible. Jeez. Okay, well, I wasn't thinking about Sure Strike, was I? That's funny. So there was no real... There was no way to play around that where we would have... Um, I mean, we could have put Epicure in front. Oh, man, I was not thinking about the First Strike. I, I, I acknowledged in my head that Sure Strike was a possibility, but I did not think that it... Uh, did not realize it was going to shrink the wolf like that. Yikes. Okay. Well, we made a couple misplays in this game, so that's that could be uh, could be it for us. Um, so, a braid. A braid kills something of theirs, and I think we want to do that right now. Um, whereas, like, celebrants, if they have another combat trick, they just get to bust right back in. They get to kind of do that anyways, but like the blood pedal celebrant kind of saves us. Hmm. They're out of tricks though. The cel the Falcon celebrant is just great. Whereas like if even if they don't have anything else, we play we braid this and place um, blood pedal. They probably still attack us for three, and we probably take it. Huh. I think I think it's this. But uh, if they have another trick, yeah, it's going to be pretty bad for us. So, yikes. Made a couple misplays there, obviously. It's hurting us. Still got a chance. Still got a chance. Ancestral Anger. Okay, draw cards. Trample is good. Oh, man. Yeah, and then there's removal too, eh? Yeah, Okay. I think my, my my mind was just not quite there at any point in this game. I just, yeah, wasn't really considering remo removal spells. Um, well, sorry guys. I think I, I think I kind of punted this one away. So we're gonna take we're gonna go to um, we have to block right three four six seven eight nine. Yeah, so we have to block. That thing has tramples. So we block three three. We go to three. Uh, <laughs> hey. I really let you down this game, Avra Caretaker. You would be good here. But instead, you're not. Uh, okay, so if we play Blood Petal, we have to chump with it. Oof. We have to chump with it, take two, go to one. And obviously we're like killing something in the process. So... We could cycle the caretaker. If we were to find like flame blessed bolt, that could kind of save us because we could go. Uh, we wouldn't have enough mana though. Huh. So I guess we go celebrant, a braid, chump go to one. If we draw land, are we good? Not really. So that doesn't help us. Brag. Um, I think we have to cycle this. Okay, whatever. Sure. Timeout. Man, okay, what a what a bad way to end this game. Sorry, guys. I think we could have won this. Uh, I just want to see what was on top. Anticlimactic, man. I guess if we draw a bolt here, no, no, Dormant Grove wouldn't have done it. So I don't think we 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 didn't have a line there that would have uh, would have won us this game, but. Um... Rats, couple a couple of sloppy plays there on my part. That's too bad, but uh, successful draft got there. Six six wins is good. Um, really good, really good result. Would have loved to have trophied for you, but uh, maybe next time. I think the deck turned out really well. I liked how we navigated the draft, and uh, you know the games were pretty fun. I think we for the most part made some good decisions and uh, rocked people with one of the best cards in the set. Unfortunately, I. Uh, 
Yeah, don't have a ton of experience playing against the uh, the trainee there, so that was the first punt, and then uh, I think kind of mismanaged a couple things in that last game there. But six wins, always an always nice to see, and uh, we'll see you for the next video. As always, if you like what we're doing here, like and subscribe is always appreciated, and questions in the comments below slash if you want to point out things I did wrong, you can uh, go ahead and do that as well. Um, thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.